Now that you have exported your animation from Motion Builder, you will import it to use on your CAT rig in 3ds Max. Reopen the original file in 3ds Max. You will start with a clean file. The process of importing a Motion Builder animation onto a CAT rig is different from what you have seen before. It is not enough to update the skeleton elements as you have done with bones and biped skeletons. You need to add the animated skeleton to the scene and then capture that animation onto the cat skeleton. Furthermore, there is a very important rule to take into account. Cat spines, like back spines and necks, are based on procedural controllers. These will not work when using a capture animation workflow. For spines to react to FK animated bones, they need to be keyframable. If you select the back spine element on your superhero skeleton, you will notice in the modify panel that the control is set to procedural. Change that option to keyframed and then click yes to dismiss the warning. Select the neck bone and do the same. If you had additional spines to your character, you would need to adjust those as well. You are now ready to import the animated punch you saved in Motion Builder. Insert the FBX file, but do not dismiss the FBX import dialog just yet. So far, you have mostly accepted the defaults when using this tool. However, in this case, it is not enough to update the scene elements. You need to choose the Add to Scene option this time around. This brings in an additional Bones character that contains the animation data of the punch motion. The trick is to retarget your cat rig to the Motion Builder Base Bones skeleton. This is done by using the Cat Capture Animation tool found in the Animation menu. In the Capture Animation dialog, expand the Cat Rig Mapping rollout. In order to retarget your Cat Rig to the skeleton, you need to use it as a target object. The Bone Skeleton is your source. Click the Source Objects button and select the Bone Skeleton's pelvis. Select the Target Rig button and choose the pelvis on your cat rig. To map the two together, you can try using Auto Map, but you'll probably need to help it a bit. Select Unassigned Source Nodes and drag them as target nodes in the right pane. Do not dismiss this dialog just yet. At this time, the cat rig is retargeted to the bone skeleton nicely, but it's still dependent on it. If you select the cat bone and go to the motion panel, the motion layer that got created is still based on the source motion capture. This becomes evident if you try to turn off that layer. To make the animation an integral part of the cat rig, you need to bake the animation onto it. This is done by clicking the Capture Animation button. This creates a new collapsed layer motion layer, and this time, turning off or even deleting the mapping layer doesn't affect the motion. Now you can dismiss the Capture Animation dialog. You can also get rid of the bone skeleton as you don't need it anymore. This leaves you with an animated cat rig. If you need to relocate your character, you can use the Layer Transform Gizmo to do that. If you need to make simple adjustment offsets to the animation, you can of course use adjustment layers. With this movie set, you have learned three different workflows between 3ds Max and Motion Builder. 
Using a Character Studio Bipad is arguably the easiest solution because it's easy to create in 3ds Max and its rigging is automated in Motion Builder. A cat skeleton is certainly easy enough to create in 3ds Max, but the interoperability of the Motion Builder requires a little more effort. Both Bipad and Cat allow for simple layer adjustments after the animation data has been brought back to 3ds Max. Working with simple Max Bones is the most manual of approaches, as you have to build the skeleton manually, and there are no easy ways to adjust the animation in 3ds Max after you have imported it from Motion Builder. However, you can always go back to Motion Builder for further adjustments and bring the animation back to your 3ds Max Bone Skeleton. All these workflows are acceptable, and which one you end up using depends largely on your own choice or personal preference. This concludes this 5-part series on interoperability between 3ds Max and Motion Builder. We hope you have enjoyed it.